at my office we handle a lot of different legal matters. We help people with a lot of different legal needs. We handle a lot of DWI cases and I would say that one of the most frustrating things that I have to do is meet with somebody who's been arrested for DWI or DUI and in Missouri there is no distinction uh, between the two in the law. And they've been pulled over for whatever reason, speeding, what they call improper lane usage, weaving, you name it. And the police officer may have smelled alcohol and says to that person, have you been drinking? Inevitably that person, if they've been drinking, usually says, yes, just one or two. And generally speaking, police officers love to um, uh, apply what we tend to call the rule of fours. They don't believe anybody. Uh, they're typically going to get you out of your car and generally they're going to ask you to do what they call some field sobriety tests and field sobriety tests are what I've referred to before as stupid human tricks. Uh, they are essentially some tests that are very good at, uh, at measuring your physical, physical ability to either walk on a line or sometimes an imaginary line believe it or not while touching your heel to your toe as you take steps and this is an ad, not a normal way of walking nobody walks that way um, people always do these tests but what they don't realize is that you don't have to do those tests these are what we call again the standardized field sobriety tests uh, there's generally three standardized field sobriety tests that are used in Missouri uh, and uh, one is what we call the walk and turn which is the walk this line uh, another one is what we call the uh, one leg stand, which is where an officer will ask you to raise up one foot off the ground, hold your uh, foot maybe 12 inches off the ground, and uh, count by one thousands until they tell you to stop. Uh, again, not something that many people can do uh, under any circumstances. Uh, another one is what we call the horizontal gaze nystagmus, or what a lot of people refer to as the eye test. Uh, this eye test is complicated and most people don't really understand what it's uh, looking for and if you do happen to have nystagmus which is a side effect of alcohol consumption in some circumstances um, you're not going to be able to beat that test assuming that it's administered properly there is zero legal ramification in the state of Missouri to politely declining to take the field sobriety tests be it the eye test the walking or the raise up one leg um, and generally speaking, if someone were to call me and say, should I do these tests, so short of you being uh, some sort of gymnast with some sort of amazing sort of agility and uh, balance in this, I say, no, don't do those tests because they're not really all that fair. Uh, I've, had, uh, I've had clients before who I've actually, in my office, had them stand up and we've tried to do some of these tests and they can't do them uh, because they're, not, they're just not natural there's zero ramification for refusing to do those tests and I would say politely maybe you ought not do those tests. Uh, there are more complicated tests in terms of breathalyzers and a lot of people say well should I blow and that's just not the kind of advice that we can give generally right here I am sitting here uh, making a video for this website and uh, without knowing everything or a lot more about your circumstance uh, on that particular day uh, your record if you have any it's very difficult where you have been pulled over it's very difficult for me to say just as a blanket rule take the breath test or don't but what you do have a right to is a phone call to call an attorney and they have to give you uh, that phone call and they have to give you 20 minutes to uh, make that phone call because unfortunately it's not always easy to reach a lawyer uh, at the uh, at the drop of a uh, drop of a hat especially if it's the middle of the night um, <clears throat> but uh, that's something that you're going to want to do and you also have the right to conduct that phone call in private and if the police officers will try to eavesdrop on your discussion which oftentimes they'll do you certainly have the right to say to them uh, I'm entitled to have this discussion with uh, with my attorney in private so um, I would recommend that obviously what I would mostly recommend is that you don't drink and drive drinking and driving is uh, is foolish these days with Uber and uh, and all of the other easily uh, obtainable methods of transportation that we have besides driving in this town. So I, I would always say, you know, don't drink and drive. It's not worth it. I don't drink and drive personally. 
Uh, it's just not worth what you'll spend on a good lawyer, what you'll spend on the classes that you're likely going to be mandated to take. Uh, not to mention some cases people have to install electronic devices in their vehicles that you have to blow into to make them start. Uh, all very expensive and all very much a pain and that doesn't even get into the potential of losing your driver's license and or going to jail. So and those are all, you know, those are all legitimate issues that you need to be concerned with. Uh, that said, if you do find yourself in that situation, uh, remember that you do have certain rights and uh, you're best off to reach out to an attorney. If you have an attorney, call that person. If you don't, good luck trying to reach one. Again, sometimes that can be difficult, but exercise your right and ask for a lawyer. Um, the next thing I would say about DWI law uh, in Missouri, and my practice is for the most part limited to the St. Louis metropolitan area, uh, is that you hire a lawyer who knows what he or she is doing when it comes to DWI law. There's a lot of lawyers out there that will dabble and essentially claim, sure, I can help you out with that case. You, you're going to want to make sure that you have an attorney who works on DWI law frequently enough that he or she knows all of the insides and outs, not only of DWI law, but of the unwritten laws. And when I, when I, I shouldn't say unwritten law, the unwritten policies and procedures in some of these prosecutors' offices around the region uh, that can be of a great uh, advantage to you if your lawyer knows how that works. Uh, I'll get calls from people who have cases way out of town and I quite frankly tell them we need to find you somebody in that area who knows the ropes, who knows the people and understands the ins and outs of that county. Uh, if, if I'm not a regular practitioner in that county or that particular court, I'm not going to go there because I'm not going to do you any good quite frankly. You're going to want somebody who knows the, the routine in that particular court. Um, all I can tell you is that uh, you're going to want to have a lawyer who will communicate with you. Uh, as much as you need to. You're going to want to have a lawyer who will share with you the police reports, any other information that he or she uh, has, maybe videos. You're going to want to see these things. And you're going to want to sit down with your lawyer and review these things. Uh, and, uh, and then ultimately whatever decision is made with how to proceed with that case, whether it's go to have a trial or perhaps plead guilty, you're going to want to uh, have a lawyer who educates you so that you can make an informed knowledgeable, what we call an intelligent decision. These are the most important things uh, about uh, being charged with a DWI and for that matter any sort of criminal offense. You need to know what you're doing uh, and the lawyer is the person who's supposed to educate you at least in that in that limited window that you that you need that education uh, so that you can make the proper decision. So um, on that note I will tell you that uh, at my office you deal with uh, me. The people that come in and hire me and trust me to represent them in any sort of case are represented exclusively by me. Uh, you don't get handed off to an associate. You don't get uh, uh, delegated off to some other person who handles your case. There's unfortunately a number of firms that do that sort of thing and, uh, and that's not what you want. When you hire an attorney, you've obviously either been referred to that person or somehow found that person. You pay that lawyer, obviously, their attorney fee, and, uh, and you expect to be represented by that lawyer, uh, not to be handed off. And, uh, and that's exactly what happens here. You work with me and only me. I have a small staff. It's very attentive. And, uh, and we represent folks and people that come in and hire me uh, because they trust me. They work with me. And that's how that works. And that's what you want. I would suggest that before you hire a lawyer, you consider... Uh, a lot of things and not just price. Occasionally we'll get an individual who will call and say, what do you charge for this kind of case? And I can tell you that if you're shopping for an attorney and you're looking for the cheapest attorney, uh, you'll find the cheapest attorney. Uh, but there's an old saying, good lawyers aren't cheap and cheap lawyers aren't good. And that's generally the case with lawyers. The old saying of you get what you pay for uh, pretty much rings true with lawyers. So I would say do your homework, get some referrals, talk to some people who know a lawyer and trust that lawyer and have had good experiences with that lawyer and then go sit down with that person. If they won't sit down with you uh, without you paying them money, go see somebody else. Uh, any good lawyer is going to sit down with somebody, not charge them anything for that consultation and, uh, and hear what they have and that way we can, uh, we can tell you what we can do for you, what, what, what options we might be able to get on the table for you. So. 
Uh, I appreciate you watching this video, coming to the website. I would uh, encourage you that if you'd like to speak about some sort of legal matter, call us. The phone number is down on the bottom of the screen. We're back at the website. I'm not smart enough to understand all that technological stuff, but I, I certainly can help you out with your legal needs, and I appreciate you taking time to watch this video.